welcome back to my channel guys it is day 21 are you guys ready are you guys excited oh i am so so happy guys we are almost finished with week three after today it'll be week three we start week four tomorrow and then the last two days they are going to be a lot easier simpler and just kind of fun you know you guys have made it the whole way and so we can't just be a thousand all the time right so if this journey is resonating with you guys please hit that thumbs up button down below make sure you guys subscribe to the channel set the notification bell so you always know when the next video does go live and also guys just for convenience I will release these every day at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and please comment down below let us know how you're doing on the journey guys I'm up and down I have good days and I have really tough days but I'm making it and I feel the change I, uh, I just everything is changing so fast and it is super super amazing so i hope that you guys are having a beautiful afternoon morning evening wherever you guys are and thank you for joining me for day 21. we're still on healing with yoga and mudra and today will be the last day of this we start something new tomorrow so never fear guys i'm trying to keep it interesting for you guys so that you want to come back you know if we keep studying the same thing which technically we are we're studying the chakra system but if we keep studying like one thing the whole way through i feel personally like it gets boring i'm a pisces guys i like unpredictability with some predictability like i live for that okay so <laughs> if you guys know what i mean hit that thumbs up button down below leave me a little fishy in the comments you know i love i love to see you guys i love to hear from you guys more importantly i'm just so proud of you guys okay cool so we have a lot to cover today uh i'm just so glad the the what i want to talk about today i'm just actually really excited about this pose that i brought up today because it just, this pose has been one of those ups and downs for me. I can do this pose. I can do a lot of variations of this pose. So before we get into there, guys, let's go ahead and hit it. Let's talk about yoga poses for the heart chakra or the anahata chakra. So you've got cobra pose, puppy pose. You've got sphinx pose, camel pose, supported corpse pose, bridge pose bridge pose, dancer's pose, locust pose, and reverse plank. And these are just a few, right? These are just a few. And you guys might be like, but there's a couple on there that were on some of the others. Yes. And again, we have that, you know, it spills over. All of yoga is to align our body. It's to really get us into this space and be within our body. Our vessel is, and it's our responsibility to take care of this vessel that our soul is animating right so it's important for us to take care of that to make conscious choices so if you notice that poses are similar from another chakra then that's okay and that's good too because it means that you guys can do a little bit of work and get a huge result from it right which is what i've always noticed in practicing yoga today in particular we're going to talk about ustrasana this pose i love this pose camel pose i i know it's a popular pose Maybe not everybody knows what it is, and that is okay. If you guys know, you know this pose, right? It's It can be really insane, or it can be really difficult. It can be really easy to get into, and it can go all different variations, right? All different levels, and we'll talk about that. Um, camel pose is designed to rip open our heart centers. Like, we're talking about the heart chakra here, guys. We build up so much armor when we're getting hurt, when people, you know, betray us, when we betray ourselves, right? It's not just about others. A lot of times it's about us owning our own mistakes towards ourselves and how we speak to ourselves and how we treat ourselves. And then allowing people who we know are not good for us on the journey to come back into our lives and owning that, hey, you know what, maybe I did fold on my boundaries and my standards and I let this person in, but I want to heal that. I want to let go of that armor. And that's what working with the heart chakra is all about, okay? And so camel pose is designed to really rip open our heart chakra so that we can be open to this beautiful center that allows us to connect with all of humanity. And it allows us to connect with our intuition and the creator, okay? 
Uh, so camel pose is an energetic back bend that helps with confidence and your vulnerabilities. It is a counter pose for our forward flexion all day. What are we on? Phones, computers, we're driving, we're sitting, we're always doing forward flexion, right? It is challenging and it can be adapted to every to anyone who struggles to reach their feet. So if you guys can't reach your feet in camel pose, don't trip chocolate chip. I got something for you. Okay, I promise. I promise, okay? <laughs> Oftentimes, when done, you will notice that your heart is racing, even though your breathing remains calm. Like, your heart will be pumping around in there like Tweedledee, Tweedledum, but your breathing is just like, <sighs> you're like, wow, this is great, right? It's one of these types of poses. This is such a good posture, okay? The entire front of your body, the abdominals and the thighs will stretch in this, which we want because they're constantly active. Our muscles are in the front of our body are always active. And oftentimes it's our back muscle muscles that are stretching, which causes us to lose strength, right? So the abdominals and the thighs stretch while the back body, the back muscles, the buttocks and the hamstrings are engaging. If you tuck your feet with your... And if you tuck your feet, so if you put your toes down, right, like toe stand so that you guys can grab your heels, then you feel the stretch in the soles of your feet, right? And that feels good. It feels good, especially if you guys wear high heels. Like, how many women on here wear high heels? I know I don't because I'm tall and I just, I have a couple pairs. I just don't break them out very much because, whew, they can be killer on your feet, okay? I like to wear me some barefoot shoes, bare minimal, the minimalist shoes that's what I wear I like to be touching the ground when I'm walking and so I have those ones that look like your toes and yeah so <laughs> good times guys but I know I have some high heels and sometimes it feels good to stretch your feet okay so let's talk about the neck the cervical extensors engage to extend the neck while the cervical flexors are stabilizing this to create a controlled curve like you don't want to throw your head back okay you want to keep that length in your neck okay with the torso, your spinal extensors engage to lift and extend the spine while the abdominal stretch here. The pectoral stretch as you broaden across your chest. Then the middle and the lower trapezius work with your rhomboids to retract and stabilize your scapula while the serratus anterior stretches, okay? With the arms, your posterior deltoids, your latissimus dorsi, and your teres major muscles are engaged to extend your shoulders while the triceps extend the elbows. With your thighs and your lower legs, the hip extensors engage to help you lean back while the hip flexors stretch. And that is something I feel like is kind of important. Like we don't get a lot of chances to stretch our hip flexors. And so in any pose that you can stretch your hip flexors, it's always a good one to go in. And those are the muscles out here on the sides of your thighs. There's, I mean, there's a specific spot where they're at, but that's really like where you'll feel it this tight, uh, this tight muscle. Also with the IT bands there too. If we have strong hip flexors, we can keep our IT bands strong. <laughs> I know this cause I've overstretched my IT band. It hurts. <laughs> okay, so the quadriceps engage and lengthen, working the hamstrings to stabilize your thighs. Your ankle dorsif dorsiflexors engage to flex the ankles and extend the toes. Did somebody call me a dork out there? <laughs> All right, the strongest part of the stretch may be felt on the plantar region of the foot, right? The bottom part of the foot. With the alignment, you want the breastbone to lift up. You want your shoulders to roll back. And a good way to think about this, when you put your hands on your back, you put them on your sacrum, you want to push your sacrum bone down. Like, it's not going to be a huge movement, right? And then oftentimes, it's like putting your hands in jean pockets so that you can push your sacrum down. And what I found is the best way to open your chest is to bring your hands back up and put them at where your bra strap would be and roll your shoulders back so you can feel that opening in your chest. Put your hands back down on your, I, I'm having a hard time because this is here. Um, you put your hands back down in your jean pockets and then go into the stretch. But that way then you're open in your chest because that's the point is you're, we're trying to rip open the heart chakra here, okay? And then, so your breastbone is lifting up and the neck is elongating, right? You don't want to just let the head flop around here. This is to create an even back bend. 
your knees are hip width distant apart. Now you're very, you have variations here. Okay, so you can all you can use blocks for a higher variation if you can't reach your heels, or if the blocks are even too far away, you guys can just stay in that same posture at the beginning and lean back as far as you can. And remember, when it comes to the back, you don't want to overdo it. Listen to your body, right? The back is like, it, guys, coming from somebody who's broken their back, like you do not want to have a back injury, okay? Listen to your body, please. And this is a good place to put it in there. I'm not here to replace your primary care physician. Everything that I'm giving you guys is information that I have researched and learned over the years. And if you guys choose to do any of this, know that it is at your own risk, okay? I know you guys are probably sick and tired of hearing that. This will be the last video I promise you that it is on because what we're studying next week actually has nothing to do with body movement or healing in that way. We're going into a much different area of healing, okay? <laughs> Camel pose is great for your posture and your spinal disc, disc health. And this was a really hard one for me when I first started. Like, I could not lean back, guys. And I have had variations. I have been able to touch my feet. I've been able to put my feet flat on the floor and go all the way onto my heels. I've been able to put my hands on the floor. And I've had it where I've gone all the way back to not being able to bend all the way back. So no matter where you're at on this journey, we wake up a different human being every day. So do not try to compare yourself to whoever's on the video that you're watching, whoever's the teacher that you're taking it from, to anybody else, you know, even the pictures that I post in here, please do not compare yourselves to these people because each and every day you wake up as somebody different. There are going to be some days when you wake up and you're going to be way more flexible and there are going to be other days you wake up and you can barely touch your toes if you guys are able to touch your toes. You see what I'm saying? Like these extremes happen because we just aren't the same person we were yesterday. Today's a brand new day. I wish I could explain why it is that way, but that's just the way it is. It just happens like that. So don't ever expect yourself to be where you were yesterday. It's always good to try and be the best version of yourself today. And that's just something to remember on this, okay? Uh, it's great for your posture and your spinal disc health. Make sure to warm up first and take care with the position of your neck. And it is okay in this to keep a tuck chin. Like if you guys don't know what's going on, keep your tongue checked. Uh, your your tongue checked. Okay, keep your chin tucked, guys. Why? Because you don't want to toss your head back. Okay, like that's not like we're not having a loose head here. It's not loosey and goosey, right? Everything we're doing, we are doing with controlled movement, conscious movement. Okay, so if you guys don't know what to do or your neck is bothering you, keep your tongue checked. But you. Oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> I promise you, I know how to talk. I just, whoa, like it's coming out. It, keep your chin tucked. Keep your chin tucked down, okay? When you keep your chin tucked, then you guys can still get into the posture, all right? My brain is moving faster than my mouth is. So you have a spinal extension. With back bends or spinal extensions, they push your, inver your invertebral disc slightly forward while strengthening your back muscles, and that's what we want. This helps greatly for the health of these discs and can be applied therapeutically for disc issues. However, always, 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 can I stress this enough, always consult your healthcare professional and a qualified yogi professional about your unique condition first okay don't just take it at the drop of a dime your health is the number one most important thing here okay there are some cardiovascular risks to keep in mind here okay like i said when you do this pose sometimes your heart will be pounding and you're like what the heck but you're not breathing very hard that's what this pose does it opens you up and it's just there's something into it i just didn't want to get that deep into it so i'm not going to even mention it but that's why i wanted to talk about the cardiovascular risks here just keeping in mind and paying again pay attention to your body listen to your body this is why you can't compare yourself to somebody else because they're not in your body and that is so unfair to you to say, hey, I need to be where so-and-so is because that's where they're at and I, I'll look like I am actually know what I'm doing or I'm doing good. No, it doesn't matter. You need to listen to your body because this vessel is so important, okay? So important. 
So there have been reports of injury in uh, cervical hyperextension, right, going back too far, including joint damage, impaired blood flow, and stroke. Risk in increase, this risk increases in elderly, though more women in their 20s and 40s are having strokes. So just keep this in mind, okay? Everybody applies to. The risk factors include migraines, pregnancies, smoking, and prolonged use of birth control. And the reason that this happens for the, the uh, strokes, what happens is, is that there's a vertebral artery in your neck that can get damaged or there can be added pressure on this when you guys drop the, the head back. You just throw the head back. This is why it's so important to keep your chin tucked, okay? I don't know why this is a tongue twister for me today, but we're just going to go with it, okay? So this is why. So if you guys don't have somebody who's teaching you or if you haven't done yoga before, just remember, it's just so important to do these things in steps, baby steps, right? You got to crawl before you walk and you got to walk before you run. You don't just jump out the crib and start running. That's not how life works, okay, in anything. And we have to remember that as we go through. You're never going to start at a perfect position. You're never going to start at a thousand percent. You always start where you're at in this moment. And that's perfectly right, okay? Now, the counterflexion uh, dominance. In modern life, and truly in all of life for centuries, we've been in flexion dominant positions, right? Typing, texting, driving, cooking, uh, handwork, trades, and more. After prolonged postures of flexion dominance, it leads to muscle weakness and tightness, which is why sometimes when you stand up, your muscles might get tight. Like I have to stand up sometimes every hour and go walk around a little bit because of that and partially because I had a broken back. It's just to re, uh, what is it? Rehydrate the discs. Like you got to rehydrate. And sometimes people don't do that. There are people who sit for eight hours a day. And some of you guys may know what I'm talking about, right? And that just creates that flexion dominant in your body, that dominance of that forward flexion, right? So camel pose is the counter posture for that. Uh, it directly counteracts this through controlled extension. The important word here, controlled, okay? Controlled extension of the spine, the shoulders, and the hips, okay? So doing the opposite of what we're always doing. Back bends also energize the body and boost your mood to combat fatigue. So when you guys do these, you might feel a little bit more awake. I actually did yoga before these videos, and I feel so awake. I'm like, whoo! And usually I do yoga after I do the videos. And so I'm like, I think that's going to become a thing now. I think I'm going to do yoga before I do the videos because whew, it gave me a lot of energy. And with it being heart chakra day, well, guess what? So we're going to move on to the mudra, okay? And today we're going to talk about Padma Mudra. And this means lotus seal or sacred lotus in Sanskrit. And this lotus mudra is the symbol of purity and it is designed specifically to open the heart chakra, okay? It's connected to our heart chakra. This mudra resembles a blossoming lotus flower. It is a reminder of the divine essence within, and it gives us a way to honor our own inner divinity, radiance, and beauty. It reminds us that from the mud and the muck, we can rise above the darkness and into our light essence, right? And anybody who knows about lotus, you know the seed plants in the mud, and it has to go through all that yuckiness at the bottom of the the pond, the the lake, wherever it, it is, right? It has to go through all that yuck and the muck and the bleh, and then it goes up through the water, and then it blossoms on top of the water, right? The path of the lotus flower is much like the path of spiritual enlightenment. How so? We must go through the dense vibration of suffering in order to rise to the high vibration of love, right? The mud and the muck represent our ego, right? That emotional ego that when we feel like we have to prove ourselves, it's these habits, these beliefs, these stories, these dramas that we're constantly telling ourselves. They're the lies that we tell ourselves, but that's what the mud and the muck is. We have to swim through that. We have to wade our way out of that, right? It is a challenges our shadow and the inertia that we have in our life, like the path that we're just consistently going on without making a change. The water through which the lotus must rise is the cleansing, clarifying, and purifying of our souls. It purifies us 
and make space for that light that we're trying to bring in, right? We are both light and dark aspects of the journey. We can't have one without the other. We live in a dualistic type of world and so without the good there isn't the bad without the bad there isn't the good nothing would exist if they went away and sometimes I think that's hard for people to grasp onto because it's so much in that egoic energy of I'm right and you're wrong my way is the only way and your way is the wrong way you see what I'm saying and that doesn't exist for their way to be wrong and your way to be right, that dual that dualistic energy has to exist in order for you to feel connected to that belief. You see? It's a big concept, right? So this happens through yoga, personal development, and our self-care practices. So exactly what you guys are doing here, right? This is you guys getting cleansed and purified and brought through the dark and the muck and the yuck to become new again, right? This takes action. What is this challenge? It is action and awareness to accomplish. And that's awareness of self, right? A want to change and become a more aligned version of you. And I never say a better version because we're not actually trying to be better. That would give the example that we're worse. And none of us are worse. We're perfect where we are. However, we can be unaligned, right? And that means that maybe we look a certain way or we seem like we're a mess or this, that, and the other. That could just be out of alignment. But when you become aligned again, things are easier. Think about your car. When your car is out of alignment, it's just constantly pulling to the right, right? That's kind of like you in life. You're just constantly pulling to the right. You're not really going down a straight line. You're like making these tire marks on the road that look all kind of silly, right? But that's not a bad thing. That's just where you're at because you're not aware. You're not consciously aware of the inertia that you have going forward. And so we want to become aligned with our highest self, the best aligned version of ourselves. It doesn't mean we were worse. It means that we're realigning the path so that we can go straight ahead on the path of least resistance. If you're constantly pulling to the right, isn't that resistance? You're like holding the wheel to the left so that you don't veer off the road. Do you see what I'm saying? Like you're resisting. But if it's a good alignment, you barely have to touch the wheel. It just goes down the road until you got to like go down a curve or turn or do, you know what I mean? That's the same way with the spiritual journey. It's kind of a weird analogy, but it worked. It worked. <laughs> this puts us in a period of growth, right? And that's something I think you guys have probably experienced on this challenge is growth, which is good. That's a good thing. It's uncomfortable, but it's beautiful. Once the flower blossoms, this represents our pure, beautiful, fully awakened self, the most aligned version of ourselves, okay? And it's not like better or worse, it's just that is the, that's how we're meant to be. But all these social beliefs and constructs have weighed on us and people have told us things that aren't true or we've told ourselves things that aren't true and we've come to believe those lies about things about ourselves, and it's just wading through all that, right? Padma Mudra is associated with the goddess Lakshmi, who is the Shakti of all types of good fortune and abundance on the spiritual material planes. She graces us with gifts, compassion, and love. Okay? Padra Mudra opens our heart chakra to receive love, grace, compassion, and abundance. A gentle reminder to lean into love, even if it is uncomfortable. And that's what we're doing in this growth cycle, too. We're leaning into the uncomfortable aspects of it so that we can become that more aligned version of ourselves. Now, the benefits, it helps you to remember that your pure essence is love, bliss, and radiance. The lotus seal inspires perseverance and purity, okay? It reminds you of your own inner beauty. It is calming to the mind, and it opens this heart space to love and compassion, which we did talk about. Now, let's talk about Padra Mudra. How do you do it? It's easy. You come into prayer, and then what you do is you keep your pinkies together, and you keep your thumbs together, and you open your fingers up like this. And it represents the blossoming lotus, okay? Now, this is a really difficult mudra to hold. So if you guys, I want you guys to meditate with this. 
But if you guys can only meditate with this mudra for a little while, and then when your fingers get tired, when your hands get tired, just put your hands on your thighs. That is fine. Okay, it's just going. It's just going to take time to get used to holding this because it does take a lot of muscles in your hands. Hand, like these are muscles that you're not really used to working. It's like working these muscles here. It's it's interesting, right? But if you guys do that with me, and some of you guys may have fingers that flail open like crazy, like. The person who's doing it right here, their their fingers are flare, flailed well, like really far open, right? So it's just looking at it from this, right? Like you're just learning how to do this and don't worry about holding it for 10, 20, 30 minutes. Like if you guys can only do five minutes, that's fine. I did five minutes with it today and my hands were like burning. I was like, whew. And she's like, okay, you can put your hands down. I was like, oh, thank you. It was so good. But this is a mudra that I've worked with for a long while. Um, I would say probably this whole journey I have used this and I've used it before. And it's it's pretty amazing, right? Like it will help connect you with your heart chakra. It will help you do a lot of beautiful things. So remember, we're opening up. This is this is like the one center of ourselves that we're mostly disconnected from. And so in opening ourselves up to this, like we get a chance to love like we've never loved before. But before loving someone else, we have to give that love to ourselves. And that's unique and different than a lot of people tell us, right? Because most people are like, oh, you got to love everybody else before you love yourself. And when that happens, we end up loving so many people and putting ourselves on the back burner, we get burnt out. And so this will help you guys with that. And camel pose will help re-energize you guys so that you can pour into your own cup okay so let's talk about the journal question okay so we're on week three one two okay so what are your codependent traits the relationships drugs alcohol work etc there are a lot of things think about your codependencies what do you depend on this could be caffeine it could be a tv show it could be anything right? Just think about what you depend on just to feel normalized in the day, okay? What memory comes to mind that may have contributed to this belief? All right, excellent. I want you guys to check out that 10-minute yoga practice that I have in that channel, um, on that playlist on my channel, okay? That will help get you guys connected with the heart chakra as well. I actually don't know if she does the camel pose in that one. It's, I don't know. So maybe you guys will see the poses that I have been talking about in those. If not, don't worry about it. It's okay. You guys can always look for one that maybe you resonate with a little bit more. Those are just simple uh, practices that are not very long that you guys can touch on, okay? Meditate with this mudra, the Padma mudra. So again, it's just super simple. Nothing crazy. It's probably the easiest mudra that we've had other than the Gayan mudra. And then the affirmation that I want you guys to work with today is my inner light and beauty shine brightly. And it is not to convince ourselves that this is real. It is to understand how do we feel about this affirmation, okay? How do you feel saying this affirmation to yourself? Note that in your journal. I forgot to bring my journal over here. I have it. It's over there on the table. I just forgot to grab it when I sat down to start the video. So make sure you guys journal. That is the number one most important thing. And then, again, we're on week three. So adding these to your regimen, it should you should already have a routine in place by now so that adding one more few minute thing shouldn't be that big of a deal right so like a five minute meditation shouldn't be a big deal uh that 10 minute yoga practice it shouldn't be a big deal i know there's a lot of people who are like i don't have time but with this challenge you took 30 days and it's a promise to make space for what you need to do to heal Okay, and that is all I'm asking. Hold that promise for yourself. It's not for me. It's not for your friends. It's not for your family. It's not for your spouses. It's not for your kids. This is for you. Watching this video, the one staring at the screen right now, this is for you. Okay, keep that promise to you because you deserve that. All right, we're almost done. We have got nine more days. Nine more days, guys. That's it. 
you've made it this far, just a little bit further to go, okay? I'm going to leave it there, guys. I love you so much. If you guys are interested, check out the tarot reading that's going to drop with it. It is not a requirement. It's just there for those of you that are interested in the tarot side of things. I do post a pick a card reading every other week, also at 2 p.m. on Wednesdays. And yeah, I will see y'all tomorrow. Have a phenomenal rest of your day. And thank you again for being here. I'm so honored to share this journey with you guys. I love you so much. I'm so proud of you. I feel like we all need to hear it. Give yourself a pat on the back, all right? And until tomorrow, bye guys.